My guest today is Mike Harper, a local UX professor, and he's going to share some things on what you need to consider when selecting your UX education. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Design Today. I'm your host, Dylan Winspear. On this episode, I've got Mike Harper, a professor of interaction design at Utah Valley University, the only school in the area to put together a full 120 some credit four year UX degree. I met him a couple years back as I tried to get more involved with the university and the students graduating from his program, bar none some of the best graduates I've encountered. Listen close to what Mike has to share as you consider looking into a UX education. He'll shoot it to you straight. Four-year degrees aren't gonna be the right fit for everyone, but regardless of the direction you take, he's got some principles you can apply while in school to prepare for a stronger career in UX. Mr. Mike Harper, thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you taking your time and and joining me. Uh, And I've appreciated our friendship that we've had over the last year or so getting to know yeah, it's you almost and two years now i guess it I has been it has, yeah. yeah so i, I really appreciate uh, uh what you've done for me and the relationship we've established and then obviously I, I really appreciate what you're doing for the ux community um i want to give you a moment to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your background prior to getting into our topic today which we're going to be talking about the value of an education mm-hmm. uh, specifically a ux education uh, but tell me a little bit about your steps and the process that you went through to get to where you're at today uh, as an associate professor at UVU. And I think that that title actually downplays a little bit of what you're doing at U- UVU because yeah, you're you're definitely involved with a lot of, uh, I guess, the future and the vision of what this curriculum at UVU is. And it, it yeah. is taking big steps. So tell us a little bit about your background. Well, my background started um, when... I went to uh, Utah State University, um, newly married, got there, um, and took a, you know, back back in the early 90s, there was no digital media programs, there was right. no UX design programs, um, there was no multimedia programs, it was pretty well, computers were there, the internet was just coming online in 1992, 93. Yep. So I started off doing business um, because I had been managing a ski store in Reno, Nevada, where I grew up uh, Mm -hmm. part of my time, originally born in Southern California. Um, But I got up to USU, thought, oh, I'm going to do business, and then it didn't feel right. And so I I went with what felt right, and that was doing geography and basically, you know, things in the world. I I love maps. I love looking at maps and things like that. And so I happened to go over to the geography department and met a man who had become one of my mentors, Dr. Cliff B. Craig. And at that point, I was doing geography education. So I was doing things for um, the K-12 education component and working with the National Geographic Uh Society as part of a program there. And my first semester, I guess it was probably my second semester, um, you know, the question was asked, well, what do these teachers need? And it was, we need to get computers in their hands. They need to have resources. So I, on my own, went out and contacted some companies and said, hey, we're we're needing software. Would yeah. you be able to donate this stuff? And yeah. I'm kind of a salesman. Sure. And so they gave me hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of free software. And I presented that to him. And he said, how would you like a job? I'm like, well, okay, what do you want to do? And he says, we need to create content for teachers. And I said, okay, that sounds good. So we actually, that's how I got started doing computer-based um, programs. Sure. And so at that time in 93, that was the age of one speed CD-ROMs. You sure. know, I had our Apple two C's. We're plugging these things in and we started creating interactive CD-ROM content for sure. teachers. Yeah. But that wasn't just good enough doing the content. We had to do things bigger, badder than everybody else. <laughs> so we started, that yeah, me. we started doing our own um, lab, a development lab, outside of everything else that the school was doing, you know, and we're in one of the labs at the uh, College of Natural Resources. And we started asking serious questions, which was, well, why do these work the way they do? And wh- why are the colors, uh, you know, having these dots? And why can't I get more full colors? So we started looking at the technical issues. Yep. And then we started asking 
harder questions, which were, well, wait a minute, why isn't this functioning in an easier way for, for these kids? Yeah. And actually it was the kids were probably fine. It was the teachers that were having the problem. Yeah. So we started creating interactive products. And of course, with geography being my, my love, we were traveling to Mexico, to Australia, doing these type of really cool projects and interacting with companies uh, that were doing really kind of at that point, cutting edge, um, you know, content and yep. delivery. And doing interesting things with people that were at Sandia National Laboratories, getting their software, hacking away at it, just trying to make things better, more pleasing in terms of the experience. Yep. All of a sudden, now that I look back at it in this conversation, I'm that thinking that was. that's where that point began. Yep. And I what guess- What year was that? That was 93, 94. Interesting. Because then I went on study abroad with my wife to Mexico. That uh -huh. was our first big project where I was taking content and then we would be using it mm -hmm. after- so that's been a long time ago. Well, at least my students say that, right? That's yeah, of course. Old. Some of them probably weren't even born yet. No, they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> but that was really the culmination. And I, I guess the first thing was just learning to follow your passion. And that if you do that, all the other things will fall into place cool. in some way. Cool. So that was kind of where I got started. Worked at a dot-com during the dot-com craze and crash. Well, several, but one specifically in uh, Arizona um, was one of the 867 official casualties of that era. Um, and where I was doing content development, managing uh, writers as well as multimedia content creators yep. uh, for that. And then uh, after going out and doing a lot of other different things, um, I decided to go back to education, um, teach at college, and uh, here I am. I've been there for almost 18 years. Come You've been January. at UVU for 18 yeah, years? Yeah, 18 Holy years. Holy smokes. That's kind of crazy. So the... the the UX program that you're working and putting together, uh, that's not 18 years old. No, so what oh, no, were you doing? No. What were you doing? Well, when we first started, it was a, it was known as multimedia communication technology. Okay. It was the first digital media program in the country that was yep. started directly as its own entity. Yep. We didn't come out of art. We didn't come out of you know psychology uh, or computer science or anything like that. It was strictly developed as a multimedia degree. So we're really kind of unique in the world in yep. terms of how we got that started. Um, at that point, it was generalist. Everyone, was, I mean, we were just trying to teach students how to do video editing, audio editing, you know, photography stuff. Yep. Um, and then since that point, I've been there and we've diverged off into multiple degrees now. Um, we split them naturally, which is digital audio production, digital cinema production, um, animation, game development, mm -hmm. and then we have our web design and development. Yep. And within that, we have two concentrations, our web and app dev, and then our interaction and design. Cool. Um, we couldn't, we wanted originally to have our interaction and design uh, concentration as a degree, but because of politics and, and other things. Red thought, tape. Well, yeah, but there was a logical side to it, which is, you know, we needed to show them that this was valid. They hadn't heard of user experience design. Sure. They're looking in the research going, well, we don't see any jobs for this. I'm going, they're coming, guys. They're coming. Uh, yeah. This is, this is again, um, late 2000s. We're, we're already gearing up for this, this degree or this yep. concentration. And by 2004, we had already had an interaction design, uh, several interaction design classes. Amazing. So we knew what was what was coming forward. And, and that's just because of, you know, people like you, we're, we're networking, we're talking to people in the industry, we're doing things ourselves on yep. the side. And I don't want people to, to think that you know, as university professors, we're just living in our own bubble, you know, but we saw it. And um, so going from a generalist degree, now we have this full blown 123 credit concentration. I love that. And it's fun. I mean, yeah. we have a blast. So let me just jump in real quick because I don't, we're going to talk about the value of education yeah. and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of self-taught boot camps for your degrees. Cause mm -hmm. there's a, ti a time and place at which I'll, I'll give you, allow you a chance to discuss on. But I do want to just say before we get much further into it, that as a hiring manager mm -hmm. who's looked around at all the different universities here in this state uh, and has hired and interviewed uh, dozens and dozens of, of, candidates from these schools and from these boot camps, I am always floored with the quality that comes out of the UVU UX program. Well, I appreciate it's, that. It is above and beyond. Mm -hmm. And I think it does stem from the fact that at the end of the day, there are some things that one of the big pros in a four-year degree is a four-year degree. You yeah. can't fake that type, type of time and that type of work. Um, 
And so when I was in, I think it was maybe about a year and a half ago, I was there on campus with you and I saw one of your labs that you guys have set up. Mm -hmm. And it was the very first lab that you guys had where it was, there was audio in that room. There was, uh, it's advanced digital media sandbox is what it's called. The ADMS. (laughs) And you've got so many cool, like, tools and toys and things. I shouldn't say toys. Toys. They're all tools. They're, they're tools. <laughs> I look at it and I go, they're toys. I mean, you you allow these students to come into this lab and, and play and experiment yeah. and, and try to learn these things. And I was floored. Mm. Uh, I never had that as part of my education. And at that time, you were starting a, a new lab, which was going to be focused more on like, uh, it was AR. It was the you know, you had like doorbell technology, you had refrigerator technology. That was our you UX design lab. The design labs. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay. And then we also have a research lab that we just built uh, for doing our eye tracking and, and a lot of other research. And you were zoning and, off the room for different like smart home, different yeah. things. And like I was just floored by the quality of mm-hmm. uh, education that, that students could get. And yeah. knowing that, you know, there's 126 credits. Is that what you said? 123 total. 123 for the, that's the whole degree. That's the whole degree. general ed yeah. as well as your... Program. You can't fake that. No. And so, and it's it's not repeated at any university here. And I'm not going bashing any of the universities, yeah. but it's not found at any other university. Well, it's found in very few, actually, when we were in Amsterdam with the students at yep. UX Strat. A lot of the people were like, well, so how many classes do you have? And we told them, oh, it's a whole program? Yeah, it's a whole program devoted yep. to just that. Yep. Um, cause so many, and it's not to bash them there. There's here, here's something that's important as we yep. get into this topic is students just need to be given the resources and the mentorship. And I hate to use that word cause that's thrown around so sure. much now, but they, they need that guiding hand to let their, their, their skills and their, 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 um, I don't know, their intuition yep. out. Yep. So, the release. so we like to do that with the whole program, but even these other programs can be very beneficial. There's yep. students, great students that come out of all no of doubt. the different programs. The problem that we found though is up front in the freshman and sophomore years, they need some tutelage. Yeah. They need they need that grounding to where they can feel free to yep. experiment. And that's where that what you're talking about, that that maturity that can come with a four-year degree. So that's a hard thing. Yep. But we felt that we needed a full program in order to do it justice. You can't just yep. throw in a few classes and expect it to work. No. And, and over the last couple of years, I mean, I could name a dozen students who've come out of your program or who are still in your program and, and nearing graduation, mm-hmm. but I could name a dozen students who have just blown me away uh, in the quality uh, that, that of education they're getting, the quality of their understanding. So you guys are doing great things. Um, but I, I don't want to, this is not a sales pitch for no, no, coming no. to UV. This is not, that's not the point. And, and before we started, you, you also mentioned that, uh, you're, I guess, aware enough of the pros and cons of each of these different types yeah. of education. So let's get into that for the next little bit. Let's talk okay. about the value of education, whether it be self-taught, uh, a boot camp, or a four-year degree. What do you see as kind of the pros and cons to each of these? What are your, what are your thoughts there? Well, here's where we were talking earlier. I'm not afraid to tackle the topic and it's not a sales pitch and, and you know, for our program here, here's the deal. And we have to talk to our students too. We get parents to come in and ask, Hey, we're going to spend this money on, on, you know, our children, yeah. or my child specifically, what can you tell me? Right. You know, they've, they've already done their research and right. they say, well, what's, why don't we just go to this 16 week program or this, you know, uh, year and a half, half the cost. And I could do this and that. And we, yeah, well, we some of them aren't half the cost. That's the question is, is that what they're asking is why do a four year? Well, first of all, let me just state this. Everyone is, has to educate themselves in some way. In, yeah. in some, in some instances, a four year degree or, and beyond may not be what suits you. Yep. I have known many people, many successful people, including the ones we know, Steve jobs and all these other people who went to, to college and then dropped out, you know, for various reasons. Sure. The interesting thing, though, is that they would never trust their companies to dropouts, if you think about it. Yeah. Steve Jobs, he hired PhDs, master's degrees, uh, you know, to go and do that hard work. There's a time and place for everybody to educate themselves. And some people, they gravitate to that self-taught yep. very well, and they're very disciplined. They know what they want. They go get it. Education is that. It's you need just to learn improving to learn yourself. At the end of the exactly. Day, and saying. some people, they just gravitate to that, and they learn how to learn and do it on their own. Yep. For the majority of people, they need handholding. And that's not in a negative sense. They need to learn. I had that problem. Yeah. I had that problem as a kid in high school. Um, I didn't mature until I got into college and really started going, oh, wait a minute. I I can do this, man. This is great. High school wasn't serious for me. Yeah. 
So there's the self-taught side. Then there's the other side where we have these four-year degrees and everything in between. Now, one of the questions that people ask is, well, you know, boot camps, you know, do they work? I think they work great for a, a certain set of people, especially those who are already in their careers. Let's say they've been in doing something um, for 10 years and they're either having to because the company is saying you have to go out and retool if you're going to keep your job or, you know, here's a new opportunity. We need to get on the stick yep. and we can't find qualified people. You, we, we know you. We trust you. You need to get these skills. Okay. So let me just jump in because the, the example of what you're saying right there is we actually just hired one of those students. Okay, yeah. uh, came out of a boot camp, uh, but previously she's got eight to 10 years of just graphic visual design experience go. and had, had worked in a handful of different companies uh, and then wanted to go, okay, well, I want to get to this UX thing. What am I missing? Jumped yeah. into a boot camp. Realized that well in the end I guess I was kind of doing that already I was following a yeah, user some of it is natural design. some of it is natural and then came out with the other side with a great UX understanding but also some application understanding already previously and she's yeah. doing fantastic yeah and see and that's a perfect case where boot camps really do help people to yeah. to take a foundation that they already have and then to meld it into something that is needed. It's where we have the problem where we have these young, young kids that are coming out of high school or let's say, you know, they've, they're, they've been working for a couple of years and they want to quickly move into a, another area. And a lot of them are following titles and pay mm -hmm. scales, things mm -hmm. like that. That's a different scenario. Our goal for a four year is to take these students and help them not only learn how to learn, but they've got to find themselves. They've got to find what drives them. Yeah. And that takes time. I mean, some of these, some of these students, and I was one of them, there's, you know, headlights, deer, you know, moments, and you're not sure, you've right. got to grow into those shoes. And so that's, that's that problem that we're having with, yeah. with education right now. And you'll hear people in the industry say, oh, you know, four-year degrees are worthless. You know, those are the thing of the past. And I actually had an epiphany the other day I can share with you later, but I, I don't think that's the case. And, and look, there are programs that aren't doing great out there for whatever reason. And there are degrees that are not worth a lot yep. just because of the way they were developed. But I would say that they're missing the point of what a four-year degree is. hundred percent. I don't think it's just getting the skills because you can get skills in a lot of other ways. It's the whole package. Yep. That's what we're after is that whole package where you as an employer and anyone in our field says, I trust the system that they're giving them these particular resources, these particular methods, these particular ways of looking at things. You know, you keep listing those off and that they've come out enough to say, wow, I really love what I do. I love learning. I love getting critiqued. Mm -hmm. I love the challenge. Mm -hmm. That's what we're after. And it's hard to do that in 16 weeks, sure for is. example, sure especially is. when you don't have a foundation. Yep. And you might find 16 weeks later that actually you're not as passionate as you think you may have been. So there's oh, yeah. baked into four years is the opportunity to kind of learn, grow and expand and, and what it is that you're passionate about, like you said. Yeah. And I've also found that, you know, because I'm very high on, I can teach a lot of hard skills on the job. And so if you're going to school just with this idea of like, I need to learn hard skills, there's easier ways and, and cheaper those hard ways. skills are very specific to tasks that you have in your organization. Right. There's <laughs> you know? another skill set though, that comes out of schooling, whether it be 16 or I think further demonstrated in a four year degree, uh, which is just your ability to commit. It's your ability to refine and mature. Um, and some of those things, again, I think are harder to fake. And so yeah. I, I do find that accountability to a four-year degree is one of the pros when I'm looking at candidates. doesn't mean that if you didn't do a four-year degree, you're not capable of possessing it. It's just evident in seeing that you've tried this now for four years. Yeah. And I think there is an evidence-based uh, scale that has to be met. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one way that, that as you screen, that's another check mark you can say okay this helps me to understand yep. what i'm getting that's into that's a great way of phrasing right? it it's a great way of phrasing it it's a starting point now you know there's always going to be those individuals then that will you know go on different yep. levels on those scales but I, you know confidence there's yep. that confidence level of, oh okay I, I see that one of my uh one of my best friends and i've worked with him now coming up on 6 years uh i hired him at a startup prior to working at domo and when we had the opportunity to hire him at, at at Domo, I had jumped right on it. Yeah. Uh, he's not gonna get mad at me for saying this, but he's a college dropout and uh, didn't see the value of going back. He's one of the brightest UX designers I know. Yeah. 
yeah. and hardest working. And, and he is one of those types that is completely driven by being self-taught. And mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anyone who is better at going down the rabbit holes and learning uh, just the ins and outs of what's happening in the industry better than him. Uh, so again, that's, that is a type of person. I'll also talk to the, the student who is coming out of a boot camp, uh, and they too are just the pinnacle of everything that should be coming out of, of a boot camp. I mentioned the, the girl we just hired at, mm -hmm. at Domo as well. And then I've mentioned the students that are uh, coming out of your four year degree. I said that the, they too are at the top of the line. So there is quality that can come out of each of these. And I, I definitely don't want this to come off as if you're not doing a four year degree, you're not capable. Yeah. There's a place for each of these. Uh, and uh, there's a learning style and there's a personality assessment that might go into it that uh, you might find you're better suited for one or the other. But yeah. understanding the basis and understanding your options, I think, yeah. is huge. I think it's important to also understand we're all self-taught when we all think about it. Oh, yeah. At the end of the day, so, you can you sit know, in a classroom, but if you're not trying to learn, yeah, you won't learn. we're all self-taught. I think one valuable thing with um, a four-year program, and at least the way I like to pitch it to either parents or even the students themselves or my colleagues, is what is our role there? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's there's this idea of professor. I'm going to profess. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a good way of looking at it yeah. anymore from the traditional sense, right? Yep. What we're there for is to provide opportunities for students to find their their skill sets. Mm -hmm. We're there to to provide avenues of of research. You know, like you're talking about this lab. I spend hundreds of hours every semester just keeping that, maintaining it, getting new hardware, software in there so they have access to these things. Right. You know, where else do you get that? Well, if you don't have a lot of money, you've, you're, you're now limited as to where you can get that access. So yep. we have to create a package. And I think that's one of the benefits of a four-year degree so that that self-learning is realized in, in a nice environment. Right. Well, and you talked about the things that you're also providing. I mean, you guys did remind me of the name of it, but Bet Lee is that the what Bet Lee Lehi, yeah, Bet, Bet Lehi, Lehi yeah. is that what it was called? Yeah, in Israel. I, I mean, that was not a project that self taught you would have been able to do on your home out of your home office. No, I mean, no, that's no. an opportunity yeah, that's a, that, that that's, UVU have provided. And when I look at the portfolios of the students who have who've participated in it, yeah, it's astounding, yeah. right? Uh, and I don't necessarily know their role and and what. You know, each of them had done, but looking at what collaboratively they achieved, it's astounding. And those are cool opportunities yeah. that they can have. Yeah. And those are the type of opportunities, whether it's in Israel or, you know, ones that we have in Namibia or whether we're going to uh, front here locally or yep. UX Strat in Amsterdam um, or, or any of the things. Those are the type of opportunities that students need to gravitate to because they're things that they normally wouldn't either think of doing yeah. or have have the connections to go to. I mean, when we go and do some of these U expeditions that we go on, we're taking them to personal contacts as these, you know, in these companies and we're doing these design challenges. Well, those students don't have those personal connections. That's right. one of my, my offerings to students to say, yep. okay, now respect my space I'm going to bring you to one of my friends yep. and we're going to go and we're going to have a design challenge. You need to be respectful. You need to come as a professional. You need to do these things. You would not have that connection otherwise. Yep. That's what we needed to be offering to those students. So when we go to Bet Lehi or Lehi in Israel, you know, that's two weeks on the ground in Israel, hardcore work on the site, dirty, dusty work with the equipment, you know, you know, sweat, blood, tears, the whole yep. thing. That's another offering. It gets them into the moment where they have an experience that should change their life, yep. right? Change their life in a way that they go, wow, I love what I do. I want to keep doing this. Let me find my way on things that I would like to do now. Where yep. can I contribute? You know, that's a launch point. So let me ask you a question. This might take us down a different route, but what do you think or what have you identified as that trait that allows someone to learn to learn like what is that trait that they can demonstrate regardless of the type of education they get what are your thoughts there wow there's a lot of them but i'll give you one that i <laughs> this is going to come on a different angle sure we just had this conversation uh last week in my colloquium class and this is a discussion-based class and we do a lot of readings and things like that and one of the students said, uh, well, we, in, as part of the discussion, I don't remember the exact thing, but it brought us to what is the one thing that will help me to survive in a company, to be, to be valued. Sure. And after all these other traits and things like that, I said, it really comes down to your attitude. And that attitude is make yourself indispensable. 
Yep. If you're indispensable, cause I, I think what it was is, well, how many jobs have you had outside of the university? And I started listing out, you know, the dot com era. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, there's that one, there's that one. They're yep. like, wow, that was a tough time. Yeah, it was a tough time. But I had to explain to them that I was always last on the docket when those pink slits came because I made myself indispensable. Sure. And I think that it's an attitude. And I said, guys, you have to be so passionate and trustworthy and all these other traits. What is it about the attitude, though? Is it like a gung-ho? Is it a willingness? No, it's not gung-ho. It's being serious about this is this is what I've chosen to do and I want to contribute. Um, Today we were talking about talking um, about books earlier. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the resources that that that, uh, you know, I would I would list out. One of the things we're really pushing is reading. Read people in the industry, what drives them and learn mm-hmm. from their mistakes, learn mm-hmm. from their successes. And we're on Ken Kosienda's book on um, creative selection. He's, okay. the, he's the one that um, helped to design and develop the keyboard and all that stuff for the sure. iOS. Um, and today we were just talking about it and they were talking about failure and the importance of that. And, and just this whole idea of you know, don't chase titles. Uh, don't, don't, um, think about the money and all that. And, and it came back to them. They're like, Oh, so what you're saying is, is we should be really serious about what we're doing and, and look at how we approach our jobs. Yeah. Yes. And then finally, one of the students said, so what you're saying is we're not going to get any, any, um, recognition for the work we do. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're not going to get any recognition. And one of the students pulls up and says, yeah, designers are the last to be recognized. Yeah. It's a thankless job. I'm like, yeah, but you got to be good with it. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, you, you got to be absolutely good you know, with that. It's funny you you mentioned that because the other thought that I had is in that process of things I wish I would have known in school is you also have to be good with how much work you're going to throw away. Well, like, yeah, we had that conversation yeah, today okay. again. I'm <laughs> like, guys, you realize when you're looking at your iPhone, how much time and effort went into things that never ever were well, realized? Things that will never see the light of day. Exactly, and you're going to have to be good with that too. Yep. And it's not a knock on you; it is the fact that it either didn't work, or it wasn't time. I actually ran, um, there was a class that we've just pushed away, um, not because it was a bad class, is because uh, we had to do some other things. And now the students are, are doing a scripting class in place of it, just so they really understand the fundamentals of what people doing scripting are doing, right? And how you create unique products mm-hmm. based upon, you know, the, the lower level stuff. But in that class, I gave them the original patent for piles which we now know as stacks today. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, they're floored. And we brought it up again today because I said, how much of that original patent, and we even talked to the lady, uh, I don't remember her name right offhand, uh, who did the patent. I talked with her. She gave me that patent, gave me all the links and yeah. everything. And the students, when they went through it, they're like, wow, this took over almost two decades to even realize in one small piece. And it's not even 90% complete yet of what sure. they originally looked at. Were they even smart enough back then to think about sure. that? Like, yeah, they were using classic two computers, yep. you know, the little black and white screen. But they had already planned and thought through this whole thing. And it's taken that long just to get a few Amazing. of those components out. Yeah, it makes sense. So it goes back to your point and, and to their point today, which was there's a lot of work that we'll never get recognition for yep. or we'll never see the light of day. And is it bad? No, because it leads to another success where it can be applied somewhere else to solve this problem or to make it mo- a better experience here. It all works its way out, but the majority of your work probably will not ever be seen. Yeah, I was just <laughs> setting up a new computer at work uh, today. And in that process, I was syncing our, our box drive folder. And I recognized that there was like 22,000 files in it. Oh my it. gosh, yeah. And that's just files, right? It doesn't talk to how many artboards are on each of those files. And our Envision has got something like 3,000 projects between our team over the last couple of years. And it's just like the majority of that, I would even probably say 80% of that will never see the light of day. Yeah. It's, it's just crazy things. So you got to get you got to get comfortable with yeah. that. So I think one thing that a four year degree, bringing it back to that, is also helping them to mature in their perspective. Yeah. And what their expectations are, not only of themselves, but also what the industry's expectations yep. are. Right. Yep. It takes some time. And some people are fine just throwing themselves out into that. But I would say the majority and they're all great designers. Again, you're just feeling your way through this. And if in a four year degree, we can do the right things you know, uh, and working with, um, board members, working with other industry leaders, working on our own consulting, those type of things, 
that's what helps us to get those students to that stage. Yep. You know, another thing I'll throw out there just because I just thought of this as you were speaking was uh, the ability to take critique. Yeah. That's a harder one to do when you're by yourself. Oh, right? that's you're real gonna hard. have to well, go. Well, even when they're in their teams, they're struggling with that. Sure. I think <laughs> I think with more experience gives you more what I'm gonna call at bats. Is gonna give you more at bats and opportunities to take critique. Yeah. And if you're not collaborating with anyone who's given the critique, right? Yeah. And so a boot camp will give you a few at bats, but you need a lot of at bats because critiques uh, take work as well. Mm -hmm. Not only receiving, but giving. I mean, there's there's a lot that goes into it, and that's, that's a huge right. part of what we do on a full-time basis is living in the critique world, getting yeah. critique from stakeholders, getting critique from developers and users, and you know, all that is critique. And well, and helping the student it. understand it's not personal. Exactly. And that takes, that takes time. Yep. Um, if they get thrown, their first times they get thrown into some of these critiques, I mean, it's it's hard. Yep. Because they're like, oh, no, I don't want to say anything that's going to hurt their feelings. I'm like, guys, it's not personal. Yep. It's professional. Give them, give them your feedback. And sometimes I see designers get so passionate about what they've been working on. They've grown so close to it yeah. that even something that wasn't aggressively pointed at them, it's just like, oh, you're calling my baby ugly. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> it, it's hard to it's hard to separate yourself. It is. Uh, I'm only nine years into my career, and sometimes I still feel that way about different projects that I'm passionate about. Yeah. Uh, so it's not an overnight fix, but being aware and knowing how to address it is, I think, important there. Yeah, definitely. Let me ask you a question about uh, resources. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've got 123 credits for a UX uh, degree. Uh, you've got a handful of resources that you are referencing in mm -hmm. that process. What are up there with some of like the top resources you make sure that every UX student who comes through uh, is reading, is participating in? Like, what are some of those things? Well, to start off, and this is this is really more. I think we've gone back, and instead of saying we need to have all these high-powered things and all these you know crazy software programs, it's bringing the students to the realization that they need to be focused on what. Um, those who have been in the field for, you know, 10 years, yep. 15, 20 years, they're writing books, they're sharing knowledge, perspective, yep. read, yep. <laughs> you know, it's like, guys, you have to read. And you know what the statistics are just in terms of our citizenry in the United States, for example, that, that most people, 90% of the people never read a book. Mm-hmm. And you ask yourself, how is Amazon making so much money? Mm -hmm. Well, they're selling more than books. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? Um, but these students have been told often, uh, all the way from the get-go, you need to be reading. So our first thing to do is to not give them textbooks. We have zero textbooks. One is because our field changes every week. So yeah, it's so never. Fast. It's always going to be so out of fast. date. But we we... For example, in our second semester, they're told, okay, here's your reading list, and you now are expected to not only have it for this class, we'll be using it throughout your career here. So what are some of those? So universal principles of design. It's okay. like our go-to blue and white Bible, right? Yep. It's That is your Bible for right now for that one class, and then as you go along, we'll be interweaving those principles throughout. And it could be even at a 4,000 level class in their capstone project, say, okay, what four principles, when you see this problem, what four principles can you now apply to solving that problem? Yep. Why is it there? Okay. Right. So that's one of them. Okay. Um, in our colloquium class, it's a 3,000 level after they get done with their portfolio review, um, they come into this class to kind of start their idea of, well, okay, what is it about the industry? They get their reading list. This semester, it's Ken Kosienda's book. We're now finishing that up this next week. We have that discussions. Called? Creative Selection. Creative Selection. That's right. um, fantastic book. Anyone who's listening, you need to go buy it. Check that um, out. It's, it's awesome. Okay. And the students have, have learned the joy of actually reading these things and going, wow, these are actually very interesting. Yes, they are. Yeah. But then you apply it. And not only is it interesting, it's extremely beneficial. Sure. Um, we also are pairing that up with 100 um, things uh, every designer should know yeah. and the 100 more things. And yeah. they have to give presentations on those. So they have to go out and find resources or well, not just resources. They have to research it. They have to give it at least one concrete example of where those principles that, that the author, it's a she, um, is actually you know, discussing and applying. So they have to present that to the class. So one of those skills is the soft skills. Mm -hmm. How are they going to, one, present to people? How are they going to question them? How are they going to communicate with them? Love that. So those are the books for this semester. Next semester, we have the service design methodology, which is what Europeans call, uh, the, a lot of the UX design is service design. Sure. So we, I said, you know, guys, next semester, we're going to tackle that. 
And so I've got the three books and they'll be, uh, you know, they have to buy them and then we'll be making assignments and we read through it and pick it apart. Um, so that's a lot of reading that happens in there. But there's a lot of other books, everything from, you know, the, the Design of Everyday Things by Norman. It's like, that's your book. When you first get into the program, read it. Yep. <laughs> just read it. You know, you're not getting any credit for it. No, you're not. You know, we're not doing an you assignment. Just it read the rest it. Rest your life, yeah. right? Just read it. Um, so books, a lot of books. Um, trying to help them build their library. Cool. Uh, they should be able when they're and we tell them when you go to a job interview, that job interviewer we're hoping will ask the question. So, what is your latest read? Who are you reading? Yep. Who are you? Who are you kind of gravitating to as as one of those people you really enjoy and their work style and how they solve problems? They should be able to answer that question, mm -hmm. not with a blank stare. Yep. <laughs> and that happens a lot, yep. you know, in in job interviews. Like, eh, what? I don't know the last last book I even read. So that's one thing. Um, let me, let me talk about technology. We require sure. the students to not only have their own laptops, but we require them to have an iPad and, and an Android device. Just tell them straight out. You have to know the environments. You have to learn about how people think differently to solve the same tasks. So even if the Android device isn't their personal device? No, we tell them to buy it. We tell them to buy their own device yep. so that it's in their pocket. And we tell them that those shouldn't be personal devices that they can't erase at any time. Right. It should be, oh, I need to go and do a, a hard reset on this device, clear it off and restart and, you know, start over. Yep. Don't put all your music collection. Don't put all your photos. This is your device for development. Yep. <laughs> you know, so trying to get that mindset of I need to be testing. Need I need able. to be reviewing. I need to know these systems. Experimenting, exploring. Yeah. The same reason you have the lab set up where you've exactly. got touch screens for exactly. the refrigerators and doorbells. And you just need to be exploring. Yeah. And so some of those resources, you know, it's it's a hard swallow up front. They're like, man, this is expensive. Well, it's no different than the automotive guys at UVU, which do the bite a really great job, by the way, guys. <laughs> it's an amazing program. But th their first day, they're, they're four grand into tools. That's their first day. So, so the idea here is that, that our program has tools of the trade yep. now invest in them yep. and get to know them and like the back of your hand and rely on them. So that's, that's another side is the tool side. They've, I they've got to do I'm that. I'm glad you brought that up because that is a, that's a crucial piece. Yeah. So anyway, those are some of the resources. I mean, there's a lot of different resources yeah. that are out there and there's amazing things that are free. Other things they're going to have to invest in. Um, I mean, you know, the students will come in and say, man, I found some amazing articles on Medium. Yeah, it's a great space to be. There's a lot of amazing UX designers and even new people who are out there sharing their knowledge and their experience. And we've asked the students to write too. Yep. Go ahead and share your experience. There's value in that. Someone out there is having the same problem you are or the same thought. You're not the only one, but share it. The, the, the one caveat I would give to that is recognize that a lot of people who are sharing are also learning. Well, everyone and, is. Everyone so is. So just at some recognize point. just because you read it doesn't make it a source of truth. Yeah. And it could evolve in the future. I mean, I've written things that I no longer agree with. You <laughs> yeah, know, so yeah. I'm just saying you take it with a grain of salt and you try to understand context of yeah. that learning. But you know, the one thing that Medium and all these other these other platforms aren't doing, and this is the one thing that I've asked the students to do, and, and this is for the whole industry. Sure. So everyone listening, you need to take this to heart. Sure. So here's the deal is when you go onto Medium, when was the last time? you had somebody commenting in line on the article. Mm -hmm. Very few people comment in line. We're so used to hitting the star, hitting the heart. Wow, I really love that. Applause. But not the inline comment, yep. not the comments at the end, but the inline comment to say, I agree with this point. Ooh, I like that point. No, I don't agree with that point. Now, Twitter, you know, of course, the guys at Twitter created Medium. Yep. And that was their whole point was to get a different community. And I think we're so stuck with just the quick, you know, shot. Wow. Cool. You know, start gone. It's like, no guys, it was meant to be a community collaborate on collaboration it. On and it doesn't it. happen. That's yeah. where, when we have written things that we either don't agree with anymore or what have you, that should have been the case. And yeah. we're not getting that. Yeah. I, I don't know how to solve that. Um, I think people are just, they're too, they're, they're too busy. They don't want to rely on that time or, it's just a habit, you know, poof, gone. Yeah. It's part of our society. It's part of our culture. It's habitual. Yeah, absolutely. So Mike, we are at time. Oh my gosh. Already? Can you believe it with that we fast? Just got started. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate all the insight. And I hope that those who are listening were able to pick up because there's so many little nuggets in there that uh, I yeah. think are applicable to regardless if you're 
uh, learning at home by yourself, you're in a boot camp or considering a boot camp or considering a four year degree, there's nuggets to be learned regardless of the destination or the path that you go yeah. down. Just be serious, be passionate about it and learn to contribute and work with people. Yeah. Work with people. That's how we solve problems. That is how we solve problems. Not by yourself. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. That's a wrap on design today. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you.